I put Victor Wembanyama in Michael Jordan's era to see, could Wemby overtake the GOAT? Could he ruin the Bulls' two separate three-peats and even steal some MVPs from Mike? And the results were shocking. Placing Victor in the 1992 draft class, Victor immediately made a rival in Shaq. As Wemby was taken ahead of Shaq and took his talents to Orlando while Shaq goes to the Charlotte Hornets. In real life, Shaq and Penny Hardaway created a superstar duo that would lead them to the NBA Finals, even beating Jordan and the Bulls in 1995, but we only have five seasons, so we're working much faster. In our first offseason, we're going to trade away bad contracts, and with our new money in free agency, we signed 25-year-old, 85 overall point guard Michael Williams and Horace Grant, a big-time member of the real-life Bulls' first three-peat. AKA, we're playing sabotage ball, and now we're getting to work. By the way, guys, the GOAT race has been restarted to make it more realistic. I'll get into that later. For now, we're worried about the fact that our only bench piece is Scott Skiles, so for year one, this could be our fatal flaw. And in year one, our starting five of Williams, Nick Anderson, Dennis Scott, Grant, and Wemby does enough to keep us right around the 500 mark headed into the All-Star break, where Wemby is named a rookie All-Star. Shaq does not make the team. He spends his All-Star break beginning his rap career, but the Hornets, led by All-Star Larry Johnson, do have the best record in the entire NBA. And as we continue on in this season, a year one playoff berth begins to look dicey. That is, until we catch a nice win streak to end the year, and at 43 and 39, we do sneak into the playoffs as a seven seed, matched up against the number two seeded Washington Bullets with their third team All NBA center, never nervous Purvis Ellison. As a rookie, Victor Wembanyama is Defensive Player of the Year, second team All NBA, and Rookie of the Year with averages of 18.6 points, 14.6 rebounds, five assists, 1.7 steals, and 3.7 blocks a game. Michael Williams was a great point guard for us, averaging over 13 points and 10 assists a game, and Nick Anderson nearly poured in 25 points a game for the season, so the future does look bright, and in the playoffs, game one goes our way against Washington. The fourth quarter begins tied at 70, but Wemby and Anderson hit some key shots down the stretch, and we steal home court advantage with an eight-point win. This is a five-game series, and it does go back and forth from here until game five, where again, on Washington's home court, the fourth quarter is close until Williams feeds Wemby with a dunk, Williams takes it himself to the basket and scores, and the Magic close out a four-point win as Wemby provides us with a key block in crunch time. Who else but the Chicago Bulls meet us in round two? Jordan and company are only the third seed in our 1993 season, and in game one, we do have a chance to make a statement. Shot clock turned off, down one, the ball swings to Wemby for a jumper end. It's a brick. The Bulls hit some free throws. Anderson still has a chance to tie. It's a brick. There goes our best chance to steal this one. The Bulls take us down in five games, then Chicago cruises past the Hornets in the Eastern Conference Finals and beats the Lakers in the finals in six games, repeating real life for Michael Jordan as he gets another three-peat. Which means we have some work to do before year two begins. It is here, guys, that I want to say I'm very sorry that the All-Star giveaway never happened. The sponsor ended up falling through. I couldn't afford the giveaway by myself, and as you could see, there have been no videos posted on this channel at all. So in order to make good and replace that giveaway, I'm going to be giving away these six boxes of NBA cards. All six of those boxes are nice and valuable, and the cool thing is now I get to choose six winners. I'll be picking those winners on May 17th. We are going to be posting every Thursday here from now on. I am really sorry about the All-Star giveaway. I've been doing giveaways for years, and I think this is the best way I can make up for it, but again, super sorry. I hope you understand with this giveaway, I'm trying my best to make up for a bad situation. All you need to do to win one of those six boxes is be subscribed to this channel. Thank you for understanding. As for this video, with pick 15 of the NBA draft, we get a big piece pun intended, as we draft seven foot six Sean Bradley and create a team of true mutants. Then we're able to trade Dennis Scott and two first round picks for Glenn Rice, who in real life is a three time all-star. So it's looking like our roster is much improved headed into year two. Looking around the league, the 76ers end up with Chris Webber with pick number one. Penny Hardaway, Shaq's former wingman, ends up at pick number three with the Atlanta Hawks. And the Spurs lose Hall of Famer David Robinson to the Phoenix Suns. As for us in year two, we are looking great as immediately we jump out to a 12 and 2 record and at the all-star break Wemby is putting up some monster games including a career high 37 points versus the David Robinson less Spurs and then eight blocks against the David Robinson filled Suns. Wemby again is our only all-star despite Glenn Rice putting up some big time numbers in the scoring department and Michael Williams averaging a double double. Clearly the media is not giving Orlando the all-star love we deserve. Shaq does emerge as a true rival for us as he does get his first all-star nod and the 
Hornets are seemingly unstoppable. You would think with 63 wins, we would have a chance at the top spot at the Eastern Conference. Maybe we'd even be guaranteed the top spot in the Eastern Conference. But the Hornets with Muggsy Bogues, Kendall Gill, Larry Johnson, Shaq, and Del Curry roll through everyone and set an NBA record with 73 wins, creating a super team in our face. Since Michael Jordan decides not to play baseball in this new reality, he does instead win MVP, adding to his own GOAT legacy. Wemby, though, is already first team All-NBA in year two and is again Defensive Player of the Year. His scoring numbers rise. He averages 20.9 points, 13.4 rebounds, 4.7 assists, 1.4 steals, and three blocks per game for the season. Even if the Hornets are a super team, the title is in our sights, and we easily dispatch of a Chris Webber-led 76ers team in round one, and then we sweep the Cavs in round two, but shocker, the fourth-seeded Bulls sweep the 73-win Hornets in their second-round matchup. Shaq is in shambles. His rap career is also not going well, as Wemby cements himself as the best center in the league, and in game one of this Eastern Conference Finals, it is Michael Jordan's jumper that gives Chicago a late lead, but then there is Glenn Rice with a huge three to put us up two with 12 seconds left. Scottie Pippen tries to take the ball with a game-tying shot, but it is a big brick. We take the series lead that we will never... Oh, wait. We are in game seven. And now we're down two with 30 seconds left. We set it up. A pick and roll with Williams and Wemby does tie this game. There is Michael Jordan, though. He's wasting no time. He's driving to the rim. He scores. Victor Wembanyama, his young legacy on the line, has a chance to win this game with a big three. And it is so, so off. We get sent home and the Bulls beat the Lakers again in the NBA Finals as Jordan's Bulls now four-peat in this new reality. In our new offseason, we are hoping that Michael Jordan retires. We are hoping he plays baseball or golf. We don't care. Instead, though, it looks like he's on a new mission to take down Wemby, so we have to make a team that's able to beat Mike and take down the overpowered Hornets. Now, in real life, a scandal happened when the book The Jordan Rules was released. It had a ton of inside information of the Bulls locker room, and everyone pointed at Horace Grant as the man responsible for leaking that information. We are afraid that Horace Grant is doing the same, or maybe Wemby just does not like rec specs. So we trade away those rec specs and we trade away two first round picks for Derek Coleman. This is huge as Derek Coleman actually made two third team all NBAs in the 1990s. That is our one big change this off season. There's nothing really else for us. In the NBA draft, Jason Kidd still becomes a Dallas Maverick at pick number one, but at pick number three, the Bucks do change history and take Grant Hill which might be important to us later. And by the way, guys, we are going to be posting consistently every Thursday on this channel, which means this is the new first video of the GOAT race, a race where we track how different stars perform in different eras, such as right now, Wemby performing in the 1990s, in order to see who the ultimate GOAT is. We might do Luka Doncic in LeBron's draft class next, or we could continue with Wemby. Let me know what you think down below who you would want to see. Year three is the season where everything fully clicks for us. In the regular season, Wemby is still our only all-star. Hello, media, Orlando Magic, we exist. You will realize just how crazy one all-star is in about 20 seconds. Victor himself is certainly impressive. He sets a career high 42 points in a statement win against the Chicago Bulls. He has an amazing triple-double with 20 points, 15 rebounds, and a career high 14 assists against the Spurs. And when this year is over, we find ourselves with 71 wins. 71 wins, one all-star. Huh? Come on. Victor Wembanyama, though, is the league's MVP with 24.6 points, 14.6 rebounds, 5.7 assists, two steals, and 3.4 blocks a game. Even in a harder GOAT race, Victor still MVP in year three big. Shockingly, in just his second season, Chris Webber with the 76ers joins Wemby on the first team All-NBA, and we match up again against Chris Webber in round one, but this is no competition. Easy. Three to one series win for Wemby. However, the Bulls are lurking again in round two. In game one, finds Mike go off for 54 points as Chicago Chicago cruises to a 15 point win over us. Then in game two, Mike scores 46 as Wemby shoots 10 for 27. The Bulls take this one as well. They take a two to nothing series lead. And with the series on the line, the Magic step on the gas and quiet a lot of haters with a 30 point game three win. Game four is a lot closer, but Wemby steps up with 38 points, 18 rebounds and six blocks as Orlando takes a seven point dub. This second round series does come down to a game seven. And this time it is not close. I'd love
love to talk about some drama, but Glenn Rice has a 40 point masterpiece and Orlando takes this one by 22, ending the Bulls dynasty run, which means we finally have it. Shaq versus Wemby in the Eastern Conference Finals. Game one comes down to the wire. Tie game, 30 seconds left. Victor has the ball. He rises up, he shoots, he fails to give the Magic the lead. And on the other end, there is Shaq out of the pick and roll who throws it down. Hornets up two, the Magic still have a chance. Wemby doesn't want the last shot. He gives it to Nick Anderson. It is off. That is the story of this series. Wemby plays pretty great, but Shaq seems to just have more help. In game six, the Magic are on the brink of elimination. The score is tied, headed into the fourth quarter, and then Larry Johnson scores 16 fourth quarter points and leads the Hornets to the NBA Finals, sending us home in disbelief after a 71 win season. It doesn't mean a thing without a ring. Who cares about the MVP because Shaq wins finals MVP and now time is running out. Year four needs to be our year at this point. We need to win a championship. And yes, Kevin Garnett does go number one in the 1995 draft. That is notable, but what is notable to us is we make a trade for a star. Nick Anderson, Scott Skiles, you had your chances. You blew it. This is Wemby's world. So we trade those two. We trade some first round picks and we get our man Grant Hill. Grant Hill is an emerging star in this league and we now have a very tall wing duo of Grant Hill and Glenn Rice to go along with the rest of the mutants on our roster. Year four is another big season as Wemby has established himself as the star, the face of the NBA. He almost notches his first 50 point game with a career high 48 points against the Grizzlies. He grabs an absurd 25 rebounds against the Spurs, who he seemingly is setting every record against. But again, somehow he's our only all-star. Orlando has more than Disney, one of the best teams in the league here, just saying. In year four, we win 70 games with one all-star and Wemby is MVP, defensive player of the year and first team all NBA with averages of 28.7 points, 14.8 rebounds, 5.9 assists, two steals and 3.7 blocks a game. The thing is though, we are not the top seed in the East with 70 wins. The Hornets won 72 games as Shaq is now named second team all NBA. In real life, I am sure they would change the rules so that both Shaq and Wemby could be first team. But in this reality, we are low key ruining Shaq's individual legacy. Kevin Garnett is actually named first team all NBA as a rookie and Chris Webber is named first team all NBA again because both of them play the forward spot. In this year's playoffs, we play old man Larry Bird and the Celtics and bring out the brooms. We sweep them in a statement round one. In round two, the Sixers again have become our playoff rival and Chris Webber actually gives us a bit of a scare. Is it too much of a scare? We're up two to one in this series when on their home court, Webber scores 10 fourth quarter points as Wemby goes ice cold, but there is Grant Hill with a chance to win this game and it is just way off. So now we're tied two to two. Luckily, there is no more sweating. We win game five by 25 and in game six, Wemby has 40 points and 20 boards and an 18 point win, which brings us back to the Charlotte Hornets and we are jumping to game seven here because the last two minutes of this game is wild. Series on the line, game is tied. Shaq gets the ball and finds Larry Johnson for the basket. On the other end, we speed down the court and Wemby is right there to immediately tie this game. Shaq gets it again, tries to play bully ball. It's off. Wemby takes it up the court and pulls a questionable three. That is off. The Hornets can take this lead, but there is Grant Hill with a huge steal. He throws it to Wemby, who again pulls up with no regard for time and connects on a massive three. There are still 30 seconds left, but Shaq cannot get an open shot. He gives it to Larry Johnson, who cannot finish. We grab the board, free throws ice this game, and the Magic are in the NBA Finals against the Dikembe Mutombo led Denver Nuggets. In the finals, we cruise. Games one and two are easy. 15 and 17 point wins. We, uh, uh, okay, this does go all the way to game seven after we choke massively. In game seven, Denver actually leads this one by two points at the half, but then Wemby comes out firing. He scores 16 points in the third quarter and gives us a nice 10 point lead headed into the fourth, where Michael Williams goes from passer to step up scorer. Williams has eight points in the first three minutes of this final period, giving us a lead we will never give up. Finally, Victor Wembanyama is an NBA champion as he is also named finals MVP. The offseason for year five is all about getting that back to back. We can't replicate the Michael Jordan three-peat, but we do need to end this video off right. And so with pick number 18, we actually land Derek Fisher, who is going to be our new eighth man. Looking at this draft, the Grizzlies do get Allen Iverson at pick number one. We don't want to mess with our core though. I think we are all set. So we are going to run it back with this roster. The Knicks do try to sign away Wemby from us, but we just match that contract. Knicks, you are not winning a championship. You have not won one since 1973. Knicks fans, I'm sorry. 
sorry. That's for now. Wemby comes back to us with a match contract, and in his fifth season, he goes off against the Blazers for a career-high 53 points. Against the Pacers, he swats away a career-high nine blocks. And would you look at that? We get some love. Michael Williams is actually an all-star along with Wemby. And in this season, we do end up with a league-leading 69 wins, but we are only one game ahead of the Hornets, who will just not go away. Wemby does win his third straight MVP, though, his fifth straight Defensive Player of the Year award. And both Michael Williams and Grant Hill join Wemby in the All-NBA. Wemby is first team and Williams and Hill are second. The media is finally giving Orlando some credit. And with a new big head, we almost fumble terribly. Somehow, the Boston Celtics with a roughly 80-year-old Larry Bird take us to game four, where Bird connects on a three with five seconds left to give Boston a win. That means we're in game five. This scenario could be over. In game five, we do focus up and Wemby puts up a career high of 51 points along with 14 rebounds and seven blocks cementing his mvp and young goat status we do take this win but there are the bulls again in round two the series is tied two to two in game five when wemby and mike both score 42 points but in the fourth wemby seems to have more help as grant hill ends up with a huge drive to the basket with the game tied with a minute left then hill is there again with a key steal and he finishes in transition to put this one away game six is actually kind of a breeze 15 point magic win we're in the eastern conference finals and there's absolutely no drama here the magic shockingly sweep the hornets bring on the brooms maybe Shaq was busy filming kazam during the series i'm not sure but Wemby completely outclasses him and we step into the nba finals feeling like this is going to be easy the jason kidd led mavericks meet us and immediately tell us this will not be easy kid dishes out 15 assists in a three-point mavericks game one win and then game two game is on the line with 20 seconds left when Wemby hits with a pump fake drives to the basket and gives us a lead. Dallas attempts to tie this game on the other end. It is no good. The Mavericks do win one more game in this series, but none of these games are close and worth mentioning. At the end of the day here, Orlando takes this series in six games. Victor Wembanyama wins his second straight finals MVP, and looking at how he did overall, Wemby finishes with five defensive player of the years, four first team all NBAs, three MVPs, two titles, two finals MVPs, and career highs of 53 points, 25 rebounds 11 offensive rebounds 14 assists six steals nine blocks 19 field goals made six three-pointers made 21 free throws made an incredible five-year run that would truly have him in position to become the nba's all-time goat thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and turn on post notifications that way you never miss a video in the future and remember the giveaway will be happening in the next three weeks so subscribe to possibly win that if you're already subscribed thank you for supporting you are awesome we all know it and as always, have an awesome day and peace.